So we're just gonna fluff it up. Fluff it up and spread? Yeah, and we're gonna kind of angle it down like this. This way? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So then, and then the flames will just progress upward. David Blunk, an associate professor of mechanical engineering at Oregon State University. And some of these trees or shrubs, will the entire thing will torch. And a team of graduate students are researching how embers form, how far they travel, and how much fire starting energy they carry. In other words, they burn to learn. By having discrete locations where we measure all these firebrands, what we're able to do is then estimate the total number of these firebrands that are released. Okay. And we're the first people in the world, to my knowledge, to be able to, to measure these total number of firebrands that are being released. Blunk and his team repeatedly burn Douglas fir, Grand fir, Ponderosa pine, juniper and sagebrush to determine which vegetation produces the most firebrands. And why that's important is because uh, there are models out there that can estimate, so if I release firebrands, where will they go? Can they start new fires? But they need a number to put in the models, and they don't have it. Blunk and his students capture firebrands in a series of fabric-covered squares placed around the burn test site. Drifting embers fall on the fire-resistant fabric and leave scorch marks. We remove the piece of fabric, uh, mark the corners, take it in the lab, we actually have lighting, set up the lighting, then we take pictures, then we go, go into the computer algorithm and just quantify how many. We can also back out things like the size of the firebrands. Uh, and then so we get a distribution of how it changes, you go out radially, mm -hmm. and then we go in and, and try to analyze ultimately the total number. That, that's really, I think, the, the value of this research. This year, Blunk began test burning chamise, a flowering bush common to chaparral plant communities in Southern Oregon and California. And a lot of stuff is. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you up. see it. Yep. yep. That's even more than the. Oh, yeah. Than the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Chamise burns like grease, fast and hot, and throws off a surprising amount of embers for the relatively small size of the plant. That thing went up quick. Yep. Poof. So the, uh, the juniper, sagebrush, and chamise. Mm -hmm all tend to torch really easily and produce a lot of hot fire brands. And it's not just that they're a kind of a dry plant, there's a lot of resin in it, Yeah. right? My uneducated guess is that, you know, those, those trees are acclimated to survive where it's just very dry, right? And as part of that then, they, they're just, that makes them very fire prone, right? And that part of the adaptation, and then they just burn incredibly well. You can see it's still burning. Yeah, it's still. Piece, the piece that are breaking off. Yeah. Now you can imagine, so let's say you had fairly steady winds, right? Like, Which is typical. Yeah, and then you get much bigger pieces that can break off and go and, and mm. land. Any one of those in particular stand out as the real ember cast machines? Um, I'm sure it depends uh, on conditions uh, and all sorts of variables. So, uh, unfortunately, it's the ones that live in your side of the state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, sure. Sagebrush per pound, I'm guessing chemise will be as bad, if not worse, mm -hmm. than, um, than sagebrush. Blunk's research thus far indicates sagebrush generates more hot firebrands than any other vegetation. One third of the embers that come off a burning sagebrush are hot, compared to just one in ten embers cast by a burning ponderosa pine tree. Everything depends on conditions and the material that burns, but some of these things can travel a long way and, oh, and yeah. ignite fires several miles. Away. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The Eagle Creek fire in Columbia Gorge a couple years ago. Uh, there's a big fire on the gorge side, and there's a fire that started on the Washington side, and we estimated it traveled four miles. So it jumped the river and started a fire on the Washington side. Now, I wouldn't say that's typical, um, but it's certainly not unheard of to have firebrands that travel that far. So what does all this mean for those of us here on the dry side of the Cascades during what is predicted to be a bad fire season? There's fairly simple things we can do to, to reduce that risk of firebrands. Uh, things as simple as making sure your gutters or your valleys uh, and your roof don't have any debris. Um, like in your side of the country, I think of like pine needles, right? Can they accumulate in Everywhere. there? <laughs> That's right, and so, so it's just being aware of that and cleaning it off. With the self-described paid pyromaniacs at Oregon State University, I'm Brooks Snavely for The Great Outdoors.